Hi everyone, Bongo here from the Poultry People channel. Working today on a small rocket stove for the kitchen. Uh, not the full size one that's staying out in the shed. I'm going to make a small one for the kitchen that I can put in over winter and then after winter and come back out. So I thought I'd do a quick video on the internal uh, chamber. And our internal burn chamber, uh, heat riser, and our burn chamber is all made out of steel. And a lot of people say, oh, don't use steel, it's going to burn out too quickly. The way I'm thinking is this. If one of these takes me two hours to make, okay, two hours, because I've now got a plasma cutter, I can get really quick at making these. So I say two hours. Let's say a day. Let's say eight hours. A full day it takes me to make one of these. You know, that's... that's so say full day. And it lasts a year. The one in the shed here has lasted a year and a half, nearly coming on for two years, I think. Some, oh, I can't remember. It was uh, start of winter 2013. So, uh, but anyway, let's have a quick look at what, what I'm doing now. So, I've got quite a thick steel on the go for my heat riser and tube. Let's just zero that. My steel is. 4.5 mil, one half mil thick, so it's quite thick steel. It didn't cost a lot of money. It came from somebody who was scrapping a porch or a, a lean-to, uh, an awning. Okay, it, it, it was 40 quid or something like that. It was pennies. The steel wasn't a lot of money. This stuff I scrounged from a skip, or well, Vinny scrounged it from a skip. Just a round piece of that's not anodized, galvanized steel. It's very thin. It's rock wool, insulation rock wool, like you get on building sites. In the previous one, I've used roof insulation, which is utter shite. Uh, you know, loft insulation stuff, that's rubbish, that stuff. So now I'm using rock wool. Fire, I think it's fire retardant strips or something along those lines. So anyway, I've rammed it in, packed it down, made a plate using the plasma cutter, and just crimped the end here. Pretty much done the same on the bottom. So I'm going to drop it in there today, weld it up, put an exhaust on the back, put a flat plate on the top, and hopefully you're going to get it in the house. So, uh, there we go. Must buy a rivet gun. You can use wood screws. I've used wood screws in the past. Wood screws are everywhere. But the trick is, is making them nice and quick. But I haven't had one burn out yet. Updating a bit. So I've just done this. I've just capped the and there uh, another piece of steel to stop all the uh, rock wool from falling out. I could do giving this a grind now to get the galve off it and then I can weld it in place. So I put a couple of small tack welds on the top there just to hold it in place and that's how I hold my tube in place. A couple of old, really old bolts that are, that are lying around donkey's years. Uh, and then just, there you go, see? It's in the centre, it's not going anywhere. Just got to trim these off now with the grinder. Put the top on it, put the exhaust on it, and we're done. Oh, feed tube. Feed tube still needs working on. The secondary air, somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Need your eye protection, fatty. Oh. So I've finished rocket stove, mini one with a flat top. Four inch dust flap at the back. Feed, feed. Ok, 
go to the house in a bit and get it tied up, eh? windy day outside. I've got the sticks stacked under there, which isn't great because they'll catch fire and eventually I suppose, but it's great for preheating the sticks and then feeding them in. Still needs painting up, looks like shit. It's doing quite well at Yeah. Lukewarm. It's only been on there ten minutes or so. Yeah. 